So you might uh, remember an amplifier like this. I've modified it. I put in uh, uh, a second. I replaced the amplifier, put in a second amplifier, added a noise source and everything. Um, I really enjoy this, this size box. Um, it was a really nice box because it had a uh, power supply built in, 12 volt supply, and there was enough room in there to put some circuitry. And I really like the size of it and everything. So uh, the guy that I bought the original amplifier from uh, uh, decided to sell uh, another one for $20. So, oh, okay. So, uh, so I got this one. And then while I was there, he said, hey, you want these attenuators? Uh, you can have all four of them for 20 bucks. <laughs> so what am I supposed to say? No, I kind of want to keep the guy happy and uh, uh, maybe he'll find me other things too. But uh, uh, most of these attenuators I'm not interested in, but there is one that I think definitely is worth the 20 bucks. So uh, I'm very, very happy with the, with the whole transaction. Um, so these are 1 dB step attenuators. Uh, so they're 1, 1 dB through 12 dB, I think, is these three. And these are pretty crusty. Uh, this one uh, this one looks like it might be original. And um, this one looks original, too. So these are both... I would say this one... Well, I don't know. Like I said, sometimes they come out of equipment and sometimes they were purchased separately. So this one, they both look like they were, they were actually purchased separately. This one has a serial number on it. And this one says property of Avantech. Oh, there you go. Property of Avantech, Santa Clara, California. So Avantech built a lot of microwave equipment. And so um, that's where this one lived. So it was, it was separate. The knob is missing. The knob somebody else put a different knob on it um, this one looks like it's all original the knob looks looks original um, and then this one looks strange this one looks like um, I don't know this one just looks odd the the, the, the faceplate doesn't have any numbering on it so this, this this may have been internal to an instrument. So a lot of times you bought RF generators and the uh, attenuators were built inside of them and they, they didn't put the label on the on the thing. So, And this has a real funny knob on it too. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not quite sure where this one came from. Anyway, so those are all 1 dB step attenuators and I don't use those very often. They're, they're nice when you need them, but I don't use those very often. But this one, this is the one I'm excited about. Um, this one is a model 355B, and it looks just like the ones I've had before, but it is 0 through 120 dB steps, so really, really nice. So 10 dB steps from 0 to uh, zero to 120 dB. So this one is really, really, really useful. Now he told me they're probably all dead. <laughs> uh, attenuators die a terrible death. Um, they're usually the first thing in the circuit, and when you overpower them, you usually blow out. When you overpower the, the setup that you've got, usually it's the attenuator that, that takes the brunt. And um, so he said that possibly one or more of these has one of the ranges blown out. It's usually one range that goes, and then that blows up and saves all the other ranges. Um, but he said they're easy to work on. <laughs> well, I've done a lot of videos on repairing these things, so yeah, they're, they're okay to work on. So definitely want to definitely want to see if I can get the, this one back to health. So I'll feature that in an up and coming video. Try to get that one going. Maybe, maybe it already works. Um, be nice to have some silver or a cleaner or something for these BNCs. All right. So let's take a look at the amplifier. He said the amplifier also looked like it was reworked. Uh, the first amplifier we had looked like it had an R and D amplifier in it. It didn't have the original one. And he said this one actually has a, a mini circuits. Uh, a mini circuits um, amplifier in it. So somebody must have reworked it at some time in the past. Although it's my, it's possible that HP put mini circuits components inside their uh, inside their boxes. I don't really know. We can see if we can see if it looks like it's homemade or not. Well, I would say it's all original. Yeah. 
I would say that HP decided that many circuits built a better amplifier than they did. <laughs> we'll just put that one in instead. Let me uh, change the camera angle and we'll get a better view of that. Yeah, so I think um, I think that is all original. It looks like it's bolted in there. And the wiring looks original to me. And the bent the bent uh, solid uh, solid coax and stuff. Yeah, it looks all original. So I'd say this is the way it came from the factory. In 1994, uh, that's what the transformer says, and looks like it's a little bit newer than the other one. The capacitor looks a little bit newer. The uh, transformer looks a bit strange. HP used to build their own transformers, and this one, this one's a bit odd looking, but it might be original. It's got the HP part number 9100-2894. That's an HP part number of 4-4. Four, four four. Um, yeah. So uh, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with this. Um, I do like the amplifier, um, but like the other one, I added things to it. Um, it's got a nice. Uh, it's got a nice power supply built in. I had to modify the last power supply. Um, it wasn't output. It has a, a, it has two funny things in the circuit. It has a, a current limit that shuts it down for overcurrent, and then it has another crowbar circuit on the output. Uh, this one looks like it's missing the crowbar circuit. It looks like they got rid of that, and but it looks like it probably still has the uh, current shutdown. But maybe they redesigned it a bit. Um, when I was using the other one, when I added three things, I added the two amplifiers and the power supply handled those just fine. And then I added the noise source, which is uh, drawing a little higher current and the power supply didn't want to output that amount of current, even though it has a, a nice big beefy uh, transistor. I knew, I knew it only needed half an amp and I knew that that transistor was well worth half an amp. So I, uh, I disabled the current limit on it. <laughs> I just pulled the transistor out. Um, so yeah, looks pretty good. 20 bucks, can't beat it. All right, I'm gonna test this attenuator. This is the one I'm excited about. So I've put in 100, um, 100 megahertz at plus 10 dBm, and because I need the dynamic range. And so let's uh, see, I've, I've had to use special settings to get the most uh, dynamic range out of this thing. So I have it set up for uh, a kilohertz bandwidth and I've increased the sweep time because it was going too slow to one second. Um, and I, th I think it'll cover the entire range now. So this is at zero setting on the attenuator and the reference level is at plus, plus 10. So here's one click. There's 10 dB, 20 dB, 30 dB, 40 dB, 50 dB, 60 dB, 70 dB. Now let me change the reference level to minus 50. 80 dB, 90 dB, 100 dB, 110 dB, and 120 dB. So, so two impressive things. One is the uh, ten, the attenuator works great, zero to 120 dB of attenuation, and on one setting, the uh, spectrum analyzer can measure uh, measure 120 dB of dynamic range. So that's. Uh, that is super cool. Um, so very excited. This attenuator will come in really, really, really handy.